Every day I've got about an hour and 15 drive from my hometown, Christensen, to Molde before training. I always have a nice chat with uh, this man in the, in the morning. You've got to get them, get them at it this morning. You've got to get them at it. Nu kör du på TV. Hey. <laughs> that was built about 20 years ago. This bridge, I remember. I just had my driver's license, and it makes it easier, so that we don't have to go over the ferry, which is just over there. Lonely driving, but then again, it's uh, a time that I enjoy because I enjoy to prepare and it gets your time into training you and into games to think about tactics and what we're going to do today and on the way back home you uh, evaluate and you finish football so when I'm back home I don't have to think too much about football. Being called the gaffer is uh, that's of course uh, strange when you when you think about the origin of it because it, that's the old fella and of course my two coaches are older than me but still I am in charge so that they use that uh, name. I know that the people at United are uh, aware of how we're doing. I think the managers following all his uh, ex-players and how they do with the, with the coaching and he's, he's got a great record of uh, making players into managers. I don't, I'm 100% sure that he his way of managing rubs off on, on his players. Me and the gaffer, we had a very good relationship, but it wasn't like an everyday uh, chat uh, relationship. We, he left me to it and uh, I trusted him to manage my career. So when, when I left, he just uh, he gave me a few advice that I've written down and I'm going to keep to myself, of course. He just said, you know where I am, you know, you've got my number. and. Uh, I don't want to waste his time too much. I don't want to call him all the time. I know how busy he is as well. But if if it comes to a point where I really struggle and need some advice, I'll call him because you know you'll get the best advice. I've often thought about how would the manager react if we we're in the, if we were in this situation. We lost five nil uh, to uh, the bot one of the bottom teams at the time. Away from home, we got battered. It reminded me of when we lost to Newcastle 5-0 in 96, when the, my first season. And how he, how he reacted then was, for me, just an inspiration as a player. And then that, now I've used, used the same technique and style for, for my players and I, it seemed to, um, seemed to work. Because he did trust us and I, I trust my players. When I got this job, it was expected of us that will win the league straight away. But I didn't really put the pressure on myself or the, or the coaching staff that we'll have to win it the first season. Having been a successful player makes you relax a little bit. Now I'm trying a new career and yeah, you do everything you can to be successful. But if you fail, you fail. But as long as I do it my way, I'm, I'm sure whatever the results, I would be happy with myself. I don't really put that much of pressure on us winning the league all the time. Not yet.
Well, I'm, I'm quite used to teams coming to, uh, to the stadium, uh, defending uh, in numbers, eleven men behind the ball and making it difficult. So uh, that's something we've got to get used to. Uh, we didn't score, and that's um, that's the thing that uh, hurts me a little bit that we don't score on the, the good chances we have. And uh, I've been in this situation before at Man United. It's not supposed to be easy, and uh, four games to go. Hi again, welcome back. We won the league and now I'm the proud uh, manager of uh, the champions. So, very, very, very pleased with the season. Despite drawing quite a few games towards the end, not picking up too many points, we, our cushion was big enough uh, and luckily Rosenborg, Tromsø, the other teams didn't catch us. So, two games to go and we're champions. I've got loads of champagne bottles here. That, We've got to have to uh, give to the players. So I've still not opened it. So that's actually we've got this uh, MFK 100 years first trophy. And after our last uh, draw at home, where we could have won it ourselves, watching the game, uh, Rosenborg Brand on telly after, where they lost. Uh, that was quite nerve wracking. Uh, but when they lose at home, 6 3. We can all go out and celebrate. That was a fantastic night. It was a fantastic uh, atmosphere in the dressing room, as you might uh, imagine. I think that the scenes of Molde Town would be similar to Dean's Gate of '99 after the Champions League. It was, it was uh, like a big sea of people and uh, everyone cheering. Of course, I had a couple of beers and great atmosphere. The, th the thing when you win a league as a, as a manager compared to a player is that you feel for all the other people, and especially my captain who's been at the club since he was six probably, or maybe even four. He's been there 30 years, he's always been a number two, I've lost the, he's had five silver medals and for him to finally win it was, yeah, a little bit emotional, not for, not for myself but for him, uh, a great day. So all that's left now for us to, uh, to do is to play the last home game, get the medals, get the proof that we won the league this year and uh, really enjoy and celebrate that night. Uh, first of all, we're going to give it a good go. Hopefully we can win the game for the, for the supporters as well, because I think that's important. We, we should go out there and attack and score a few goals. <laughs> Three weeks now, the party has gone on. <laughs> we are celebrating in three three weeks. And it will still be until uh, New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last night, it was a lot of celebrating. It was very late and it was uh, free drinks, so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> free drinks for a Norwegian, that means a very, very tight head the next day. <laughs> <laughs> the gold medal is deliver out and uh, the whole city is celebrating. This is the first time for Molde, so now we're going to be like United and win it every year. Yeah. You should look at my new shoes, they are from gold. <laughs> made of gold. Maybe. Maybe. He has uh, made all the effort to make it happen in the most uh, important year ever for us.
pleased for the manager because he deserves it and Mark. And uh, it's a great feeling. I've been warned about ex-Man United players going away, being manager and having success the first year and then not doing so, so well the years after. So it's not going to be a... I'm not going to rest on my laurels, so for sure. I'm going to work harder than ever to, uh, to try to get this feeling again. It's an unbelievable achievement what he's done this year. His first job in management, the pressure of being such a superstar in Norway, which he is, having that pressure obviously that comes with a 100th anniversary of a club and to go on and to win the league you've got to give unbelievable credit to Ollie on, on what he's achieved. Legendary status I'm sure is there if he wasn't there before it is now and I think this just sets him up beautifully for the rest of his uh, um, immediate career really. It's a great achievement uh, his first job in management well first year and wins a trophy. No point just winning it once I think there's been quite a few clubs winning things once and then disappear. You, you want to win it again? That's, that's the feeling I got with the manager when we won the Champions League in 1999. Okay, he was happy there and then. An hour after the party started, he went away because he wanted to win it again. And that's, that's the mentality I want here at the club, that they want to be winners again. When you get results as a manager, you always get clubs linked with, with your name and uh, I think that's great. I think it's just a sign of us being uh, su successful and of course my aim, I dream sometime is to, to manage in, in the Premier League. As a player who's, who's played at the top and then you go into management, you know, you, you, you want to manage at the top and obviously there's no bigger club than Man United so I'm sure that'll be in Ollie's mind and if he keeps on being successful then who knows, he could be back. For a while I'll just get here, get some fresh air and then uh, you never know. You... I've lived 14 and a half years in Manchester, my kids have grown up there, they miss it a bit. They're proper Manx, they're more Manx than me, they're, uh, they're not the plastic Manx like I am. My dream would be to manage Man United. I'm not saying it's realistic, I'm not saying that some, that's my goal, but it's my dream. I think everyone who's played for Man United and go into management dream about it. It's the biggest job in the world. It's, <laughs> the most difficult task you can follow uh, the manager but uh, why, why not have big dreams? His dream could be realised as long as he brought me back as coach and he's got a great chance. I want to win stuff and if he's going to enable me to do that and while I'm in the, in the background coaching, if you need me, oh, I'm here man. It has been a fantastic ride and it's been such a great learning experience so uh, hopefully there will be many more to come. Hopefully a long career, you never know. If I enjoy it I'll probably uh, stick with it. As a player you had to because it was the best time I've ever had playing for Man United. <laughs>